everyone, this is Kirk here again from optionalpha.com and in this video I want to show you how to correctly set up your trade tab when you actually decide on a stock and a strategy that you want to use. I want to make sure that you guys are setting up these trade tabs correctly so that you can appropriately find and price the right strike prices for your strategy. So what we have here right now is XLF and we just kind of picked a stock that we wanted to look at but the stock's trading at about 21, 24.21 right now and we're just looking at the February expiration options. Again, this is just giving us a frame of reference to use. Now, in most cases, most broker platforms when you actually log in are gonna show you always bid ask spread. So that's always gonna be a definite. You will always have these two columns for bid ask spread on both sides for calls and puts. But in most cases, they're gonna show you Delta, Gamma, Theta, Vega, which are the option Greeks. Now, I honestly have no idea why they show you this. In fact, it's completely ridiculous that they show all three, all four. It really doesn't give you any clear cut information on probabilities and volume and liquidity. What I've already done is I've already saved this in my platform as my option alpha setting. And so that's what I use here. As a reminder, if you need help setting up your trading platform, we do offer a service where we will help you to set up your trading platform. You can find out more about that by just going to the dashboard and clicking on platform setup. And we'll do all of this for you on the back end if you don't want to kind of mess with it and go through all of these tutorials with us. But if I click option alpha, it gives me a whole new setting for the trade tab. And so this is what I want to go over with you guys tonight. So as always, the bid and the ask always stay the same. We are going to leave Delta, but only for the purposes of this video, because I want to, again, reference back to one of the previous videos we did in that Delta is a good way to use uh, and calculate probability of being in the money if you don't have a probability calculator on your broker platform or if your broker doesn't offer it. So for the purposes of this video, we'll just use Delta again as kind of a conduit for calculating probability being in the money if your broker doesn't provide that type of data. The first thing that we have on the columns is Mark. And I think Mark is really important on Thinkorswim. It sets up on the left hand side of the columns, but Mark is really important because it shows you what the last trade was in between the bid and the ask spread. And it kind of gives you an idea of where the market is actually trading or what price traders are actually coming to an agreement on. So in this case, you can see the 22 strike puts for XLF have a bid ask spread of 14 and 17. But that doesn't mean that the options are trading at 17 or at 14. And in fact, the last trade was actually done at 15 and a half. So again, this gives you a good frame of reference. And when you're trading higher valued options, sometimes the bid ask spread can be 40 or $50 wide. And so knowing the exact price that the options are trading at is very important because that minimizes the slippage that you have in some of these trades. I mean, can you imagine if you're trading a 40 or $50 wide market and you enter the wrong order, maybe $10 or $20 above or below where the market's trading, you might get filled automatically, but you didn't get filled at great pricing. In fact, you probably got filled at really bad pricing if you get filled instantly. So you kind of want to wait a little bit and Mark helps you do that by knowing where the options are trading. The next two columns that we have are volume and open interest. Now both of these are important because volume is going to show you the actual activity for the day and then open interest is going to show you what contracts are remaining open. So I consider volume to be kind of the indicator as to how active the markets are during the day. So if we see a lot of contracts traded in a set range of strikes, we know that those strikes are going to be pretty active. In XLF, we know that pretty much all of the strikes between 20 and about 27 are pretty active on the put side. And likewise, we have great open interest in that market as well. So open interest for me kind of acts as a depth indicator. So how deep are the markets? How many people have traded it before, have positions in it right now? How deep are those markets so that maybe if those people who are trading it today don't show up tomorrow, are, is there gonna be enough traders in the market for me to get in and out of a security? And so. Having this on the chart, again, kind of narrows down the window of options that we're going to trade, right? We don't want to trade pretty much anything below 
the 20 strike on the put side. And on the call side, there's a pretty hard line right here at about the 26 strike. So even though Thinkorswim presents all of these options beyond this point, the 27s all the way up to the 36s, there's practically no market for those and there's very, very low liquidity in those markets, which means it's gonna be incredibly hard to get into and out of. But you wouldn't have known that had you not added volume and open interest to your trade tab. The last two columns, again, like I had mentioned earlier, is probability of being ITM or in the money, and then delta, which is that kind of conduit for calculating that if you don't have it on your platform. So probability of being in the money, again, calculates the likelihood of the stock moving from where it is currently right now, wherever it's last trading, up to and beyond your strike price of that particular level. So in this case, the 26 calls on XLF. XLF has about a 10% chance of moving from 24, 21, where it's trading right now, up to and above 26 between now and expiration, which is 46 days away. So that probability factor really helps us with creating really high probability trades that allow us to take in a lot of premium and extend our trading timeline out into the future. Now, as always, I hope you guys really enjoy these videos. If you have any comments or questions, please add them right below in the comments section. And until next time, happy trading.